look at uh, what God does so very well in the scriptures and that is a contrast and today in Malachi he contrasts the wicked with those that fear God he contrasts those who says there's no advantage in serving God there's no advantage in believing in a God versus those that fear God and serve him uh, many of you probably have been the point of criticism by someone at some time saying what advantage did you get by believing in God or by giving your tithes and offerings or by belonging to that church uh, you served uh, God faithfully and yet you got sick or yet you had financial difficulty or uh, you did not receive the blessings of say a, a Bill Gates or uh, some other billionaire that uh, perhaps doesn't have a strong belief in God. It's really interesting, isn't it, uh, how some people actually uh, find a way of criticizing the belief in God and making it seem like you're illiterate, as if you're not educated because you believe in God. Well, we see that kind of a contrast today in Malachi chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. So let me read those verses to you now. Your words have been arrogant against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his charge and we have walked in the mourning before the Lord of hosts? So now we call the arrogant blessed. And not only are the doers of wickedness built up, but they also test God and escape. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord gave attention and heard it. And the book of remembrance was written before him, before those that fear the Lord and who esteem his name. They will be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I prepare my own possessions, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. So you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does Yes, today we have some arrogant people who, whenever anything goes wrong, they say to you, well, your God caused that, or uh, where is your God now? Why is he allowing this to exist? That's particularly true today with this virus that's going around. Uh, and we see so many times the arrogant that uh, just want to criticize God and criticize you for serving him and for giving your money to his causes. And the contrast here in this particular passage of scripture is the fear of the God uh, will become the sons of God, the people of God. The ones that have served him will be rewarded for that service. And we can already see the benefits in our lives when we know we have done what God wants us to do. But yesterday I promised you that I would try to do a little something about giving. And I just want to again emphasize how important it is for us to evaluate our giving. Uh, let me just read some uh, religious, uh, excuse me, let me read you some secular giving uh, that's available to you. The Cancer Fund of America, the American Breast Cancer Fund Foundation, the Children's Wish Foundation, the Police Protection Fund, uh, the United States um, Sheriff, Deputy Sheriff Association, uh, the National Caregiving Foundation, Project Cure, the Association for Firefighters and Paramedics. Uh, those are just a few. I, I skipped a couple of the top ten. But if uh, those names sound like good, worthy causes, let me tell you that of those ten, which I, I didn't list all of them for you, uh, but of those 10, less than 3% of everything that is given goes to the actual cause. They're fakes. They're phonies. They've taken names that sound good and hoped that you would misunderstand them and confuse them with legitimate causes and give to them. And as a result, they line their pockets with your money. Uh, now, let's take one in particular that I think all of us would prick, pretty quickly identify as a play on another organization. The Children's Wish Foundation 
is not the same as make a wish. Uh, and these police protection funds and uh, those uh, funds for uh, police and paramedics that we would be so concerned about right now during this virus thing, uh, watch out for these names. So let me just tell you, uh, none of us are Bill Gates. We only have limited funds to give. We know what our churches and what our denominations do, and we know that there's an accountability and a transparency for what we give them. And there are many, many good causes. And you have the right to choose the ones that touch your heart and that you think are beneficial. But you need to be wise in giving. Now, let me just tell you some categories. There's scholarships. Certainly, those are very worthwhile for those that you know are of good character and good moral standing. But how much better would they be for an underprivileged child, for a child who has no chance of getting a scholarship, probably academically, because they've been in a poverty area and haven't had the same kind of education because of their parents and grandparents not having the funds to send them. Scholarships can be a wonderful way of helping those that are underprivileged break through once and for all. Uh, the second one is human rights. Certainly there's tremendous need for help in the area of human rights uh, in the United States and in the world. The arts, well, uh, that's not particularly one that I get excited about, but I know a lot of people that uh, are very fond of the arts and would like to give to the arts. Uh, then there's uh, the uh, local animal shelters. Uh, I found that <laughs> uh, the main uh, part of the Humane Society is not a good place to give, but when you give to the local Humane Societies, uh, that money is well spent. In, 100 percent or or 80 percent or 90 percent is given to the actual cause so again just because it says humane society doesn't necessarily mean that the money is well spent we'll talk a little bit more about that then there's the environment we are all concerned about the environment uh, even those uh, that follow President Trump uh, still have concern about the environment. Maybe we think that some regulations have gone overboard and have stifled uh, our country. Nevertheless, the environment is a concern for all of us. We don't want to see water polluted or air polluted. And then there's community development, uh, human services, uh, those that feed the poor and uh, house the poor and so on. Uh, there's international giving, uh, such as Lois and I do with uh, underprivileged children in another country. Uh, then there's health giving, uh, certainly the countries that are riddled with other diseases year-round, uh, very worthy, wor worthwhile causes. Uh, doctors without borders and things of that nature can be a tremendous input. So what do you need to know in order to give wisely? Well, the first thing you need to do is look at all the different organizations that touch your heart, whether it's cancer, whether it's uh, poverty, whether it's scholarships or arts or whatever, look at all of the causes uh, that you could give to by categories. Then look within those categories uh, at the following information. Never give by phone. So many times the name may sound good, it may sound like a legitimate charity, but you're wasting your dollars, you're throwing pearls before swine, uh, and so you need to be very, very careful about uh, what you give uh, to an organization. So I would say, number one, never, ever, ever give by phone. The second is uh, do research uh, on the organization uh, that is asking for funds. If somebody phone solicits you, say you don't take any solicitations by phone, please mail me information on your, your organization and I will examine it, but make no promises of any kind of gift. Thirdly, when you research, my suggestion would be that you would be using Charity Navigator. Let me say that again. That you would look at Charity Navigator which not only rates most organizations based on how much of the money actually goes to the cause, but also rates how transparent they are. That is how visible uh, how they spend your money is. 
and you'll find that there are organizations such as Franklin Graham's uh, funds that go into uh, benevolence all over the world uh, and uh, Samaritan's Purse is the name of that organization uh, you'll find that a very high percentage goes towards the actual cause well over 95 percent and that they're a hundred percent transparent now you also need to take a look and see uh, how your organization shows or if they're even an organization that's a charitable organization some of these are so clever they use these words like police benevolence uh, or they use firefighters or uh, nurses or doctors or whatever and they're not even a charitable organization they've never filed a 501c you can't even clear to claim a deduction on your income tax for them and so you want to be sure that the number one they accomplish where your heart is where God is leading you to donate but then you need to be sure that they're legitimate and that the majority of the funds go towards the cause and not lining the pockets of some crook uh, so let me just encourage you uh, when somebody uh, uh, looks to you to give financial aid, be sure you investigate them carefully be sure that it meets uh, the criteria and then again remember you only have so much to give make sure that the majority of what you give goes to the causes that God's leading you to Again, I would remind you that many of these causes are temporal. That is, they may help a temporal situation. But many of these organizations have zero impact on a spiritual basis or eternal basis. And the salvation of someone's soul and eternity are in heaven or hell. Now, that doesn't say that every cause obviously has to have a spiritual benefit as Samaritan's Purse would. Uh, the the cancer funds that are legitimate, uh, those funds that go to the arts that are legitimate, uh, if those are where your heart is, there's no, no problem in giving to them. But make sure that the percentage that you give to each meets the criteria that you feel is the right priority for your dollars. It's really easy to get out of whack in a hurry. And uh, if you have an animal, and you have a great deal of uh, compassion for animals and you give a disproportionate amount of money to a humane society when you give virtually nothing to one that has a spiritual impact uh, that becomes not what I would believe God would lead you to do and believe me uh, I am very sensitive about the welfare of animals uh, but you be sure that your priorities are God's priorities for your giving and you be sure that you consider all the places you could give and then divide up the money in an appropriate way and that's my thought for the day God bless you and have a great day mm -hmm.